What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Mon Bazoo. As always, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. So much time has passed since the previous episode that we now have $6,700. We have seven doinks in our back pocket. We also have a ton more doinks over here that we can now sell to people. But ladies and gents, today is a very special day because we only have to talk to our brother Francis one more time and he's going to give us an air compressor then we only have to talk to jacques one more time and he's going to allow us access to his junkyard which is very exciting and lastly we only have to call our mom one more time so she can finally give us the fry basket thing and then we'll be able to actually make our own poutine here at home and finally put all those potatoes we have outside to good use so i don't what do we do first i guess Call mom? Probably. Let's see if I remember the number. I have I have not looked. You guys, I have not been cheating this. I've been trying to actually remember it. 555-2109. There it is. There it is. We've done it. Let's see what she has to say. Hopefully it's something a little bit different. I just finished all the cleaning. Weird. I found a deep fryer basket. Anyhow, I let it at your house earlier. Left it at our house earlier? Is it just gonna be like outside or did she like drop it off inside? She did. She somehow, while we were on the phone with her, managed to sneak into our house and plant the fry basket. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, dude, I gotta, I gotta see how we actually use this, um, but it looks like we actually need cheese curds as well. So we're gonna probably have to buy those in town. Luckily, we're going to be going to see Jacques anyways, so we'll just have to make a quick little pit stop and see him. Generator's doing swimmingly. Let's see, we've got our gas can in here. That is empty. Good deal. If you guys are wondering how I made so much more money uh, off camera, I've literally been doing what you all suggested, and that's just been steady grinding some maple syrup. It has been quite the process. But now we're actually starting to make some decent money, so things are looking up for us. Okay, I actually almost left the house without getting some of our doinks. Now, I'm not going to click E on these, because what that does is basically put it into our inventory, so then we're only able to smoke the doinks. We can't actually sell them to anyone. I'm going to grab... I don't know. Let's just clear off this table here. I'm not sure how many people in town actually want to buy doinks from us. All right, so we're going to pull over here just at the top of... Francis's driveway I'm gonna bring him one pack of ten doinks and we'll see if he's the type of person that's gonna want something like that see what yeah. oh awesome stuff thanks we don't even have to click anything we just like put the doinks in his face and he's all about it okay I didn't see how much money we actually got from that hopefully it's 65 bucks or whatever it's supposed to be I just bought a more powerful air compressor earlier I installed my old one in your garage so there we go we have an air compressor now we, we won't be having to use that little foot pump any longer which is good news but now we're gonna head into town we'll see who else wants to potentially buy a few doinks from us i know normand seems to be pretty keen on the idea so he'll probably be the first one we talk to alongside jacques first thing we've got to do here is of course fill up our jerry can because although yeah we have quite a bit more money than we used to we're still quite a ways away from affording the um the power company's $28,000 or whatever it was just to put up a couple of poles and connect us to the rest of the town's power grid, dude. It's seriously expensive. We're going to first talk to Jacques here, though. Meh, I quite like you. Maybe you should take a look at my scrapyard. I think we'll do just that here momentarily, Jacques. And then Normand, I know he... Uh, He's at, what, 24 right now for his friendship? Let's scroll down here. Yep, there we go. Norman at 24. Unfortunately, 25 doesn't really do that much. It actually does nothing at all. So we're only going to be able to unlock the racetrack at 50 with this man. We literally have to talk to him, what, 25 more days just to unlock the racetrack. So it's, it's going to be a minute. Definitely going to be a minute. Actually, you know what? We've got so much extra cash on us. I feel like we should buy something from here. Apparently the dent repair kit 
could come in handy for the truck. So I'm, I'm definitely going to purchase one of these. We'll bring it on home with us. And then the other thing that's in there that might come in handy is the rust repair kit. There's actually two of these. About a hundred bucks for both of those. Might as well, dude. Might as well. I want to save one of those for the E36 for sure. But what would happen if we just tried to use this on, like, the front bumper? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That really did a lot, dude. So we still have a little bit of surface rust over here on the sides. But the front and rear bumpers look so much better. So much better. Hang on. Do we save it for the E36 or do we just use it? I'm I'm half tempted to just use it right now. He's going to restock tomorrow and we can we can buy more. Or at least I hope that's going to be the case. Wait, did we lose any doinks? No, nah, we good. We good. All right. We got to we got to use this other one though cuz I'm just really curious if we can actually get rid of all of the rust here. So I'm going to try it on this door. Let's see what Okay, the door has been repaired on one side. I've got you. Maybe we should have used that on the other door then since we rarely ever interact with this side. Anyways, I think we are ready to blast on out of here, but we got to make a quick pit stop. As I mentioned, we need some cheese curds. So we're going to stop at that little shack just at the edge of town and we'll see how much those things actually cost. God, dude, my mind is just all over the place today. I complete, yeah, it is 65 bucks. I completely forgot to try to sell these dudes some doinkage. Good to see you. Are you even fast? I don't think I want to answer that just yet because the E36 is not that fast, but I don't want Norman to know that. He owns the racetrack. Okay, so we've got maybe two more packages of doinks in here. Let's go see if Gila is going to want some doobage as well. Gila, my man, you are our second to last stop here for today. We've got two more packages of doinks in there. Um, oh, maybe I should report you to the SQ. The SQ. Canadians, feel free to inform me on the SQ. I'm not familiar with this, I'm assuming, law organization. Interesting. But our final stop here is going to be at the little stand so we can finally get our cheese curds. We don't need any more potato seeds, but I appreciate the fact that they are available. So it's only five bucks for some cheese curds? That seems pretty inexpensive. The only downside, though is we're still gonna have to come to town. I was kind of thinking like, yeah, now that we can make poutine at home, we're not gonna have to come to town as often, like when we would go to the snack shack just for poutine. We're still gonna have to come to town just to get the cheese curds in order to make the poutine. So, didn't exactly solve that issue, but it's all right. At least now it's not gonna cost us as much money, I don't think. And back at home at last. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking 2G, why haven't you just gone to the freaking junkyard already? We're we're getting to that. You guys, we are getting to that. Don't sweat it, okay? We just, we got to do a couple of things first. Now, I want to go check out that new um, air compressor that our brother dropped off for us. Oh, dude, look at this. Okay, so we have our tire inflator right there. An impact gun. What? We don't actually have to use the adjustable spanner anymore, dude. Well, on the wheels anyways, for sure. Now we're going to be able to uh, remove those and install new ones with the impact gun. That is so fresh. That is so fresh. Okay, let's at least try it out. You no, know, no. We're not going to try it out just yet. Odds are the stuff that we're going to find in the junkyard is probably going to need the impact gun. So we'll, we'll just save that. We'll save that for the time being. But I am super curious now to see how we actually go about making some poutine for ourselves. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We need our taters, dude. What am I doing? Getting way too ahead of myself. Okay, so first step here, obviously put the taters in the hand and then use the french fry cutter. Your basket is already full. We're gonna need another basket? Nobody told me this. Nobody told me this, dude. Great, wait, wait, wait. Th uh, excuse me? Okay, so we don't actually that's weird. We don't actually need to hold the basket. It's just kind of like the, the cannabis. It just needs to be near the um, the area, I guess. So let's keep on chopping away. 5%, 10% French fries. 
Okay. Good, 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 good. What is that? 20? Let's do 25. See how much we have left. Okay, so 50% would then be an entire thing. An entire basket. So just one more. There we be. All right. Now we have an empty harvest basket. I don't think we're going to need this anymore. Would be really interesting to see as well is if it kind of like gives us the uh, the plastic like Tupperware stuff that the poutine is in. I'm just kind of confused on how that's going to work. But now we can add our cheese curds to it. So there's 50 cheese curds in 50% french fries i don't know the recipe for this dude i don't know what we're actually supposed to do there's a hundred cheese curds in 50 percent french fries what what do i do what like what do i do now i can't close the lid to the fryer you know this is definitely something i should have researched but i wasn't at all concerned about it until now so i'm not really sure what we do next I, we do have a couple more potatoes actually that we can harvest so we'll try to fill up the harvest basket a little bit see if maybe adding more potatoes to the frying basket is gonna just magically make poutine happen i guess these things have been grown for like forever there we go okay the basket is already full just from two little plants there are these the cannabis is ready to rock again dude thank you rain the rain actually does water the plants for you so you don't have to do that with the watering can thankfully let's see about adding some more french fries to the fry basket dude i really i really have no idea how to do this so i am straight up winging it we're gonna see what happens there's 85 90 95 okay 100 percent. maybe this just means we have to keep adding cheese curds there's 200 cheese curds in 100 percent of french fries what is happening I just, I don't understand. Oh, there's a button. There is a button, you guys. I probably didn't even need to add all those curds to this. Is this going to take a while or is it pretty immediate? Oh, it's actually very immediate. Okay. Not the same Tupperware. This is neat. Oh, and it keeps a certain amount of the curds. I've got you. So we definitely didn't need to add in all the curds at one time. Thankfully, they can stay in there if they're not used. So we're not going to be wasting any. But homemade poutine. We're going to try our first bowl. There we be. All right. Now, all the other stuff, I think we're good to just put in our refrigerator. You guys have told me time and time again that this does not matter. The food will not spoil if you don't use the refrigerator. I'm just a psychopath i guess i gotta do it you guys i gotta do it gives me something normal to do here now we're gonna make our way over to the junkyard for the very first time hopefully we have enough energy to last us a while dent repair kit let's try that when we get back i think for sure and i've i've already put in the adjustable spanner inside the truck so if we need to you know unbolt something we'll have a tool in order to help us out with that let's make our way over there now so based on the map it looks like we've got to go just past the windmill plant and then we're going to come to this fork in the road we need to hang a right here and then just kind of keep going up the dirt path a little hopefully we end up finding the place shouldn't be too much longer here i think just around this big bend there it is dude right on our right Oh my god. Okay, so like, where do we park the truck, I guess? Wait. I thought dude's name was Jacques. Who the heck is Jim? <laughs> it's called Jim's U-Pole. Okay, the U-Pole actually makes a little bit of sense. But yeah, who the heck is Jim, dude? That's kind of weird. I'm going to leave the adjustable spanner in the truck for the time being. We can just straight up open the doors. I like the sound effect, too. Not necessarily needed but appreciated. Oh, I thought for sure we were gonna just be able to pick up these wheels and, and be on our merry way with them. That is not the case. So do we need to like search through these cars or how does this all work exactly? Are things just gonna kind of be hidden in here? Yep, here we go. It looks like this is the shell of an E36 anyways. There's a radio. Hang on, hang on, hang on. How do we... How do we take out the radio? Do I do I need a tool? Oh, okay. Just right click on it and it disconnects itself. Perfect. Well, we're going to throw these in the truck because I'm sure those are going to actually fetch us a hefty penny 
from Shady Dude. That's the only E36 shell that I've seen, but I think there are actually more radios in a lot of the other cars that we're going to be able to take as well. Nice thing about this junkyard compared to, you know, junkyards I've been to IRL is that it doesn't look like we have to pay for anything we take. We can just have at it. I don't even know at this point. I think this is radio number four, maybe. Does this place close? It just says no, oh, no trespassing and no motorcycles or something. Wait, do all of these cars, all of these cars have radios in them, you guys. Every single vehicle in here that doesn't have like um, tape or whatever, doesn't have glass. Anything with the glass blown out appears to have a radio inside. So good news for us. Every single one except for this one. Okay, there are a few exceptions, I'm sure. What is this thing? What the heck is this, dude? Wait, grab the hoist puller. What? Oh, wait, what is this, though? I, I, know, what, I know what this is. That's like the, the ratcheting mechanism we use to get unstuck from places. Can we buy this? I didn't know there were any other cars. I thought it was just the E36. Let's 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 try to have a seat in it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I need this. I need this. Does it start? Bruh. Bruh. Why did nobody tell me about the junkyard car? Actually, I'm glad nobody said anything about the junkyard car because there's been so many other spoilers. I'm glad that this was left unspoiled dude but now i gotta figure out can we just drive it on out of here we must be able to must be able to okay we're gonna have to come back for this thing somehow we're gonna have to find a way back here without bringing a vehicle or maybe we could get like a trailer or something i know there's a huge huge like what is this what is this dude but there's a huge huge update that's coming to monbazoo very very shortly i think by like the end of the month potentially and that's gonna add a whole slew of different things dude i'm very very excited to see what the dev has in store i just don't know what else i'm looking for here you know what i mean like hang on hang on actually i had a little list a long time ago there is a manual trans here there's a welded diff there's all seasons i guess all season tires and potentially oem rims as well and then like all the radios and stuff I think that's about it, tell you the truth. But I just don't know where any of this stuff is. So maybe let's check the dumpster in the back. All these other cars and stuff just appear to have radios in them. Nothing else really all that special. Oh, dude, there's a whole car in the dumpster. It's like an old Mustang or something. Okay, there's the manual trans. There it is, dude. Perfect. No more automatic for us. We'll have to get it installed, of course, but... That is very, very exciting. And I think that's the only thing that's in the dumpster. So we're definitely taking this thing home with us. We're about to run out of energy as well. And I would I would like to not die at the junkyard. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to make this quick. I'll go around and see if I can find anything else worth taking home, but we might have to make a couple of trips out here to the junkyard literally like a minute since my last sentence and i've just found the oem wheels for the e36 as well all four of them so we're gonna toss those in the truck okay it's starting to get dark on us but i just pulled out a brand spanking new it looks new anyways but brand new front bumper for the e36 as well we currently don't have a bumper so that's gonna help a ton it's definitely gonna make the thing look just a lot better so what are what are we missing the all seasons and then just plenty of radios in the trunk of that thing. The all-season tires, which I don't know where they are. And then the welded diff, right? Those are the last things. Okay, after a bit more reading on the wiki, it turns out that the welded diff is located not here, rather just down the street. We're not going to have enough energy to uh, go grab that tonight, I don't think. So the last thing we need is the all-season tires. They're just kind of in this pile. I guess. Wait, what the? Um, okay. We just found the buggy wheels as well. Definitely taking those home. Dude, it's it's too dark for me to see anything right now. Let's just try to toss those over there. Here's the third one. One more tire right here. 
Got him. There we go, dude. All four, all seasons. And bonus thing I didn't even know was here. The buggy wheels. I am going to have to watch the truck bed like a hawk. Literally the entire way home, dude. I can't have any of this stuff falling out on us. And to be honest, there's a good possibility we might not even make it home because our energy level is just going through the roof right now. Definitely wish I had a, like a coffee on me or something, dude. I'll be honest, you guys, it's not looking great for us right now. I'm literally not even out of the woods yet. Our house is many, many more miles away. I have a feeling some bad stuff is gonna happen to us. Any minute now, dude. I'm not even not even gonna say anything else, dude. I'm, ju I'm just gonna try to get home. That is quite literally all we can do now. Oh God, there it is. It's happened. It's happened. Okay, so wasn't able to, you know, secure the e-brake, the parking brake to the truck. There's a good, good chance it is just slowly rolling down that hill that we were just driving up, dude. There's, there's, I can't even walk. I can't even walk that quickly. Should we, oh, in the, of course, of course. Let's take the E36. Let's try to drive ourselves over there. I was gonna say we could probably take the um, the four wheeler, but there's just no, there's no shot. It's it's clear over at the sugar shack. What a disaster, dude! I can't do anything in this game without dying from exhaustion. You'd think I'd learn my lesson after this, after all this time, but just hasn't hit me yet. Oh no, dude! Hang on, e brake skirt. Nice. Um, this is not great. I'll be honest. I, I have a feeling we're not going to be able to get this thing out. Maybe, though. Let's see. Is everything still in here? We have three all seasons. Oh, one is just suddenly in the driver's seat. How lovely. All right. Let's try to get this thing unstuck first before we do anything else. Put her into four-wheel drive. And we're stuck. <laughs> we were already stuck, but now we're even more stuck, which is nice. Let's see. Let's grab the hoist puller doodad and we'll try to yoink this thing out of the ditch i have tried pulling this thing from every single direction dude oh and it wasn't coming out i think the reason why is because i had the parking brake down like an idiot oh my god oh my god okay so if i if i crouch down yeah easily sliding out now Okay, amateur mistake. All right, the amount of time that it has taken me just to get everything brought back home has been absolutely insane. We've wasted well over half a day just trying to get everything brought back here safe and sound. But what we need to do now is actually head back into town and we need to go see our good buddy Jacques yet again because the um, summer wheels and tires that we have have to be brought in to him so we can use his tire changer. I know there's one at the junkyard that's free, but I'm not gonna make a trek all the way back out to the junkyard just for that. We've gotta go see Jacques additionally for some more fuel. On top of that, I think he's gonna have a couple of other pieces that we may wanna purchase now that we have quite a bit of money. So we're gonna take a look through his selection. We'll see what we can come back home with. So thankfully we have a few more doobage packages in here so we're gonna give one to Jacques awesome stuff thanks we're gonna give the other to our good pal Norman awesome stuff thanks only fat doinks here what track he says all right and then we can go ahead and talk to them okay that is full we've got gas in the truck let's go ahead and start bringing these things on in so we'll probably start with the rim right and then add the tire around it there we go $15 per use. Kind of expensive, I'll be honest, but it's it's kind of a necessity at this point. There we go, dude. Now we have one full OEM wheel. Looking good. And we've just got to do it three more times. And now with all four of those done, honestly, dude, we could afford the new engine for the E36. I'm obviously not going to buy that because we haven't even experimented with the stock one all that much. But there are a few things in here that I would like to purchase. Starting off with some more rust repair kits, of course. We have a few things that we want to touch up on the truck. But there's also a few rusty panels on the E36. Yellow. I know the factory color of the E36 was red. The rear bumper is painted red anyways. But I really want to do yellow. 
you guys have informed me that you'll really only need one paint can. It seems like they just kind of have infinite uses out of them. What else could we possibly need? I don't think we need any suspension-related things. A new steering wheel would honestly be kind of cool. I'm a fan of the flat-bottom wheel, so we're going to buy that. It is pretty expensive, dude. 200 bones. It's like the most expensive thing I think we've bought thus far. A performance exhaust, of course. Absolutely. Does that fit? It doesn't really fit in the truck bed, but hopefully if we drive careful enough, it's not going to fly out on us down the road. Then what else we got? We have the OEM muffler. We have Model 7. None of these are really calling my name, to be real. I think, I think I'm going to go with the Model 1. I don't love the titanium tips, but I do like the dual tips. So we're going to go ahead and buy that. Um, we'll put that in the cab. <laughs> Just, you know, just in case. And to be honest, the brakes are cheap enough, dude. We might as well. We might as well. Sorry, Jacques. We're just going to buy out your entire stock today. Hope you don't mind. I'm sure he doesn't, dude. He's probably loving all this money. Oh, the calipers are a lot more expensive than I thought they were, though. The store's... The store is closed? Dude, I have two brake rotors and only one caliper. Tell me how I'm going to make that work. Honestly, oh my god, I shouldn't have lollygagged, dude. I think we got everything else that we really needed. We don't necessarily need that other caliper right now, but kind of a bummer. Not what I was expecting. Let's make our way back home and we can start getting some of this stuff installed. And home sweet home, dude. We're going to turn on the lights just so we can actually see what we're doing now that it's getting kind of dark out. But I am super, super excited to get these new wheels installed here we're finally going to be able to ditch these steelies so let's use our impact gun for the very first time we're going to start with oh my god that's so much faster hang on how do i drop the bolts okay that's one way to do it i suppose but probably not the proper thing to do oh you just click again okay that's actually pretty easy dude the sound the sound is really nice okay okay I, I, I dig it. I dig it. We don't yet have a jack, a, a vehicle jack. So I guess it doesn't really matter how we remove these things. Let's just go ahead and try to pop that off. Perfect. There we go. We can use our tire rack. Mm, that didn't pop in like I thought it would. There we go. We can use our tire rack and just get that set up there. Perfect. Okay, one down couple more to go here so we got some brake rotors right let's get the creeper dude we're gonna creep on over there wait can we just oh we can go under every single vehicle okay that's that's good <laughs> that's nice i want to i want to just check underneath here though to see if there's any way we can actually remove that existing brake caliper oh yeah sure is okay so let's get the impact again and we'll see how we can actually disassemble this. So there's one bolt. Perfect. The other. Nicely done. Okay, that should be the caliper now removed. What do we have to do to get the rotor off? Probably just remove the caliper. So we'll put the impact back. Um, I don't think we can be on the creeper for this part. So let's go ahead and hop off. Get that caliper removed. Okay, guess not. That's going to be the brake rotor. Um, caliper. There we go. Okay, so what's wrong with these? Oh, it just says it's weak. I got you. That's kind of why our brake performance is subpar. Now we just need the caliper, but this is the left side, which is the driver's side. Wrong side. It's good, though. It's good, you guys. We're going to get rid of this crappy, crummy rotor, and we're going to install a brand spanking new one. We'll get the original weak rotor placed back and uh, hop back on the creeper. Grab our impact, get this thing all reassembled, dude. I really like the mechanical stuff so far. This is really like the first time we've been able to experiment with any of this. And I like it. I really do. Okay, I don't like that, though. I hit E way too often. So for the driver's side over here, we're actually able to remove the weak caliper. And we have the new good one that can be installed. Where's our other rotor? Okay, close the door on myself. It's all good though. Let's get that installed. Then we'll pop on the brand new rotor. Um, or not. Excuse me. Ex um, 
What is happening? <laughs> Dude, where did it even go? Hang on. Hang on. I've lost a rotor. Has anybody seen a rotor? There should be a rotor just kind of hanging out somewhere. Oh, it's in the trunk. Okay, somehow managed to get that thing into the trunk. Oh, we've just got to install it with the creeper, I guess. Maybe I didn't have it in the right spot. The next morning. Well, I was so distracted with replacing the brake system in the E36 that I died because we didn't have enough maple syrup in our system. Gotta love Canada, man. Just love it here. Really having a great time. Just all around good times. You know, we've only died twice this episode. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Anyways, now that we were able to successfully remove all four of the original wheels and tires from this beast, I noticed the front brakes are kind of a similar story to what the rear brakes were, which means we're just gonna have to keep buying more brakes every time we go to see Jacques. Not that big of a deal, just kind of a little annoying. Let's see here. Looks like we have a rusty hood and a rusty driver side door, but lucky for us, I have just the thing, a rust repair kit. We're gonna do the door first. Oh, look at that, dude. Mint. It even comes primered, which is great, I guess. And the hood as well. Perfect. Ooh, yeah, that's really hitting me in the feels, dude. Really hit me right in the feels. Next, we're gonna get all of these new wheels installed. We'll probably have to air up these tires, I would think, as well. But we'll get these things thrown on so it's at least back up to, you know, ride height. And just like that, dude, we've got all the bolts thrown back in. Looking good. Looking real good. Now, I know we got uh, a little something-something over here. A brand spanking new front bumper. That is much needed. Oh my god, dude. That does so much for the entire car. Like, it actually looks like a car again. And I think now that we bought a new steering wheel, it's probably time we get rid of that weird like bus wheel or whatever the heck that thing is supposed to be so this one weighs four pounds let's see what our new steering wheel weighs the original one was eight if i remember correctly seven or eight something like that we'll see how much this new one weighs though the flat bottom five pounds okay not too bad not too bad i gotta hop in the cockpit so i can at least see this thing dude that looks great i really like the look of that i also like the little red strip there just at the top just so you know, you're actually going straight, right? Might be important, unless you're drifting. Probably not important then. I also love how it's just raining and is probably gonna rain all day. What better activity to do than... Why did you fall off? Are we missing bolts or something? Maybe we're missing bolts for that. Not sure why that just happened. But what better way to, you know, spend your day than just hanging out, working in the garage? Seems like we're pretty anxious still. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, Grab a pack of doinks, and we'll get right to it, dude. Just just a single doink, I think, will do us well. Yeah, definitely feeling better now after that. The next thing I want to do is use the tire inflator, our new tire inflator, for the very first time. And try to get this thing brought up to uh, maybe just under, maybe just under 40. All right, that's... Oh my god, dude, that scared the absolute crap out of me. I thought somebody just ran up behind us and started banging on our window. That thing is loud. Very, very loud. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of these wheels also. So now that we've essentially like brought the body of the vehicle up quite a bit, I think I wanna hop back on the creeper and just inspect and see how we're supposed to remove the original transmission. Looks like it's right over here. Okay, so we're just gonna need our air tool. Do we have to disconnect it from the drive shaft? Nope. Looks like it'll just sort of pop out. Okay. So we're going to grab our handy dandy impact gun over here. And I guess we're just going to try to drop the automatic trans out and pop the new one in. Hopefully it really is that easy. Time will tell. All right. I'm thinking I got all the bolts out. Let's see if we can just take this thing right off. It looks like we can. Okay. Just drop the transmission right on your chest and, uh, and drag it on out of the vehicle. Very easy. Oh, look, it doesn't even say transmission. It says something uh, different. Very different. But we're going to put that over here. They look a little similar, but this one definitely has a bit more texture to it. Let's hop back on the creeper if we can. 
This has been very interesting. I gotta admit, I was a little worried it was gonna be too much like my summer car, but it is just different enough to where I actually enjoy it. Like I'm actually having a good time. Granted, in my summer car, pretty much the only enjoyable thing, to me anyways, was assembling the vehicle. So I just, I like stuff like this, you know? It's peaceful, it's pretty enjoyable. All you have to do is just pop in each individual bolt, get it torqued to spec, and just like that, we have a manual transmission. I gotta, I gotta play with the gear shifter, dude. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. It's great. Oh, so good. So good. It would be really cool too if eventually we could get like different shift knobs and stuff like that. I think that'd be a, a welcome addition for sure. So what else we got? Dude, the front bumper just keeps falling off. I, I really think I'm missing something here. Let's try maybe some of these smaller bolts. Yep. Looks like it has to be bolted up on each corner there. Kind of makes sense, kind of makes sense. I just wish I would have known that, you know? Next thing we're gonna do is grab our impact gun and hop back on the creeper here because we, oh wait, what? Dude, you can remove the seats? Oh, that's big. We can make this thing super lightweight and just remove the passenger seat. Oh, I love that. I, I didn't know that was a thing, but now we've got to come down here and uh, carefully Get rid of all the bolts here that mount up the exhaust because of course we got a performance exhaust from Jacques. So it looks like we just had that one hanger there. There's another one in the back. Got that one. Oh, you can disconnect the drive shaft. Oh, but it's only, it's only for the diff. Right, that makes sense. Okay, what else we got? Any other exhaust hangers? The last one here is gonna be on the muffler, which we did get a new one of those as well. Just kidding, there's actually one more. Okay, now, now we're done, right? Okay, muffler disconnected, good deal. Try to get the exhaust disconnected as well. You probably have to remove it like from way up at the front, I'm assuming. No, oh, there's another hanger. These pesky hangers, dude. I'm not, there's no bolt in that one though. Surely I should just be able to slide this thing out. Maybe I'm not able to, oh, there it is. There it is, okay, we've done it, we've done it. No worries, no worries. Now we can grab our new one and try to get this thing situated. There we be. All right, and then where was our new muffler? Did we leave that in the cab? We did. Hopefully I made a decent choice on purchasing this one rather than some of the other ones. I know it probably doesn't matter all that much, but now that we've got all the hardware reinstalled for the exhaust system, I do think, I do think the tips are pretty much the move. I think they probably look the best out of all of them. Of course, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. But the last thing I want to do here today is try to use the spray paint. I want to just, just try to get a solid coat of yellow on this thing so we can see what that actually would look like. We do still have quite a bit of rust all over the vehicle as well. Yo, is that, is that it? I would kind of like a progress bar or something so I know when I don't have to spray any longer. Yeah, it doesn't, there's like no notification, no window pops up, nothing. Gotta say though, I, I do like the infinite spray paint. That is, that is kind of nice. Oh no! Oh no, dude. All right, which one of you guys lied to me? I was told that the spray paint was infinite. It's definitely out. It even says empty right on the thing. So we're gonna have to go into town and get another spray paint can, but that'll probably have to wait until tomorrow, unfortunately. In the meantime, you know, we got, we got like the whole front of the car painted at the very least. It's, it's looking much, much better, but I think the last thing that we're actually gonna do today, since we can't finish spray painting the car, is I wanna try to use this dent repair kit somehow. I don't think we have very many dents on the E36, so maybe we can use it on the truck? Do we just, do we just keep clicking? Oh, it is working, dude. Look at this, look at this right here. The more we click, the smoother the panel becomes. So does this thing, does this thing have infinite use maybe? I could have just got that confused. A calm yo click, it says, calm yo click. Look at that brand new hood, dude. Oh, and it did the fender as well. Okay, so we can do the doors now too. 
Maybe I got it confused. Somebody had said the dent repair kit was infinite. Maybe I thought they were talking about the spray paint cans. I don't know. I don't know how I could get that confused. But um, this is good. This is good for us. So after all that work, we have a fully smoothed, almost completely painted E36 with a brand new front bumper. We got brand new wheels, brand new tires. Well, brand new to us. Who knows how long they were actually sitting in the junkyard. They're probably a little dry rotted. Let's be real. But dude, everything, everything's just fallen into place for us. It really is. I know we had a couple of hiccups throughout this episode, but I mean, on top of the E36, we now have a completely smoothed Pick them up truck. I, I was going to say like specific branding on this, but I have no idea what this thing's actually based off of. There's a couple more things that we need to do to both of these vehicles, but I really think we made a ton of great progress today. So that, ladies and gents, is where I'm going to wind down this episode at for today. Once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.